invest in the greater good to get your contribution goal. Sharon Horn Elstrom here. This is day actually 2,102 of what shipped to now, but I'm calling it 2,101 because I accidentally skipped it yesterday. Yep. Sometimes, even though I have a process, I still type in the wrong thing and make a mistake. And when I do that, and I've already started the processes that I go through, it's sometimes easier to just make a quick tweak and a band-aid fix than it is to go back and reinvent the wheel and redo everything or fix all the places that it's wrong. And I usually just use my numbering for tracking, internal tracking, and for my spreadsheet for links and things. So it's probably only important to me by the time you get over 2,000 episodes of anything, people are probably only listening to one here and there and, and thereabouts. They're not listening to every single one. At least I kind of hope not because as bad as I think these are some days, the early ones were super duper bad. So today I created a couple of pieces of content. I talk about what's on my mind sometimes, but I've kind of stopped doing that because there's a lot of topics and a lot of things that bug me that it's, it's only, they only bug me. I'm sure they bug millions of other people too, but they're not the people I'm necessarily trying to help and serve as I show up online. So uh, stop talking about things that really don't matter except along the lines and the topics of what's important to me. I love, love, love business. I've loved business since I was a little kid, a little girl. And uh, so I talk a lot about that. And I also love personal development, personal growth, positive mindset. Why? Because I didn't always have a super positive mindset. I wasn't always, um, you know, I wasn't, I was, I was a pretty cheerful, happy kid, but I wasn't always, you know, we all go through different phases and stages of our life. And I've gone through some really challenging, kind of horrific, terrible times. And yet I'm still here to share and talk and learn and grow and continue to move forward. You know, just like everybody else, I have a lot of challenges. I personally have some physical and uh, vision challenges, right? I'm legally blind. And so a lot of things that I used to not even think twice about, I have to find another way of doing them and accomplish them. So uh, I, I don't like the word struggle. I don't use the word struggle hardly ever. Uh, because I think if we think something's a struggle, we're focusing on the problem, not on the solution. So every day I hop on and I share, and mostly because of my vision challenges, I started doing it, was to track and keep track of what I'm doing. I am a huge notebook person still, even though my notes are illegible and I can't read them, writing things down helps me to learn and retain it longer. So as I prepare for my daily content, I write notes, I take notes down, I do some research. And, you know, I've got tools at home that help me to make that super easy. Things like giant big screen. And I can just, you know, nowadays the technology is so awesome. You can link everything to these giant big screen TVs. And, and that makes it possible for me to do things that, you know, 10 years ago I would not have been able to do. And so for our annual challenge this year, the, the Get Your Goals Annual Challenge, we're focusing on the life framework area of contribution this month. It's it's the final one we're talking about this year. We've already done all the others. We spent a month on each of these different areas and aspects of our life. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial, relationships, con communication, confidence, and contribution. And I mix up, I change the order of those depending on when and who I'm talking to uh, and what's important to them, right? And as I've gone through different stages of my life, I have spent more time and energy on different areas and aspects of my life. You know, when I was married and raising my kids, relationships were my number one priority, right? When I was building my businesses, finances was my biggest priority. When I was first learning how to start and grow and supersize a business, in before I had my own processes, it was hard, right? It was hard trial and error and trying to figure everything out. So I spent most of my physical, mental, emotional, no spiritual, and financial energy on those areas of my life, right? And that was probably to the detriment of my relationship, but maybe not because it takes more than one person to make a successful relationship. And I don't think my other person was actually actively involved in wanting that relationship to work. So uh, contribution today, we're going through our, we created this beginning of the year, January, we spent the month looking at different goal frameworks and we learned all kinds of things about goals and goal setting and goal processes and procedures and frameworks. And we came up with our own framework, which is a seven step process for getting what we want, getting anything we want. It's a process we use to get goals and we've done it for each of these different areas. And this month we're doing it for contribution. And today we're on step five, which is to 
ask ourselves, how do we know we're making progress? How do we know we're moving toward what it is that we want, toward achieving our goal? So we identify milestones and then uh, we find ways to, at each of those different milestones, measure, yeah, am I going in the right direction or not? I don't know about you, but there's sometimes I'm doing something and working toward a goal and I will take actions and steps that actually take me backwards, right? That actually lose money instead of making money, that actually destroy my relationships instead of making them better, make me a worse communicator instead of a better communicator. We all do that. Life is just an ebb and flow of, of testing and trying out what works for us. And then what works, we do more of. What doesn't work, we stop doing or we tweak until we get it to work for us. So uh, today we talked about how do we identify milestones and then what are some milestones? How do we know we're making progress? Our idiom to kind of coincide with that, but not necessarily so much, was to invest in the greater good. Now, this idiom has been around since the late 1700s, early 1800s. A couple of people are attributed with having uh, used and created it. Uh, I think they were both probably philosophers and utilitarian uh, philosophers. It goes along with the utilitarian philosophy where uh, we do what's right for everyone, not just what's right for ourselves. I guess so it's the thinking of others versus selfish intent behind our investments and our philanthropy. Philanthropy to me is doing for other people and doing for others. So talked about that and I shared my past experience with this because like everybody else, I have had periods of my life where I was struggling, right? And, and barely getting by. I wasn't being very philanthropic during those periods. I was just figuring out, you know, how am I going to pay the bills? How am I going to make payroll? How am I going to not lose my house? How am I going to put food on the table, right? And when you're in that mode, you're not usually investing in the greater good and thinking of other people. Now, the trick and the really interesting part and the lessons I've learned about that is that it's when we are giving, when we are sharing, no matter how little we have, when we give value, what we put out into the world is what we get back. And once we figure that out, everything just clicks and flows into place. And we realize, number one, not only feels good, to do the right thing by helping more people or helping whoever we can along the way. Uh, but it also gets us a, a massive return, even though that's not the intent or the reason most people say that they're giving to charity. We get, we get so much more out of giving than we do out of receiving. At least I do. I don't know about you, but I'm not very, I mean, I'm trying to be a better receiver because I think it, it, uh, it disrespects the people that are giving to you. If, you can't receive graciously. It's like compliments. Ask yourself, if somebody gives you a compliment, how do you initially respond? That will tell you if you are a good receiver or not. That was something I've had to work on a lot over the years. So I did share also that I've learned over the decades that the best investments I've ever made, you know, and I've got a process for deciding and, and decision making and making investments and things nowadays. But uh, back, you know, when you're young, you don't necessarily have systems and processes for those things. But I've learned over the years through experience that every investment that I've made in myself has paid off more than any possible ROI calculator could come up with, right? Anything we learn, we might not use it right now, but we'll use it down the road. Or we'll learn that we didn't need to waste our time learning how to do that technical thing that we never used and never applied. I do have some lessons learned from those. But I learned that I shouldn't go after every little thing that piques my curiosity at the time, I need to ask myself, and that's now part of my process, do we need this now? Do I need this now? Will this help my, you know, those I love and care about, one of my organizations, my personal development, my, my peace of mind, my, to achieve my goals in any of these areas and aspects of my life? And if the answer is no, then I pass on it now. Doesn't mean down the road, it might not be right for me, but for right now, I can say no. It makes decision making really, really easy. That's why I like goals, right? If I have my goals, it's easy to say either this helps me with my goal or one of my goals or it doesn't. If it doesn't, it's easy to say no. It's a great way to take back set boundaries and take back some of your own time. Uh, and the other thing I learned is that any investment I've ever made in other people helping to, to become a more skilled, a better version of themselves, uh, in any way, and again, in any of these goal areas, you know, I've had people I've sent to communication and relationship training because their relationship was negatively impacting their ability to function at work in, and in business and in other areas of their life. So it just depends. We're all unique. We all have different journeys and uh, what we need when 
is going to be different for each and every one of us. But investing in yourself, investing in, in people you love and care about, and investing in your people that are helping you build your organizations or your business or working with you is always going to pay off more than you can ever actually measure in dollars and cents. All right, that's it. If I can help in any way, hit me up. Hanging out with my granddaughters today. I've been traveling, so it's really awesome to be back with them and being able to spend time with their little beautiful natures. Uh, but I'm available. Pajamagramma at gmail.com is my boxer handle. If you need a question answered right now, otherwise there's other ways to get in touch with me. That's it. Have an awesome day, and I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.